Oakwood School is a small special school in Bexley Heath, South East London. There are only 56 pupils, yet such is the value of the support staff here that the school has 12 learning support assistants, two of which are further qualified as higher level teaching assistants, or HILTERS. As well as the traditional roles of supporting the teachers in class, the LSAs here offer pupil assessment, one-on-one -on -one specialist help, access to an alternative curriculum, and have even devised and implemented their own language project. Marcellus has 14 merits. Well done, Marcellus. It's Friday morning, and the pupils' awards and merits are being handed out in the weekly whole school assembly. But a lot of these pupils aren't used to getting awards. Oakwood is a secondary school for pupils with social, emotional and behavioural difficulties. Many of these pupils have been excluded from their previous schools. We offer a full curriculum. We're like a mini secondary school, but we specialise in, in behaviour is the way I like to look at, at Oakwood School. Next one goes to Jack, who's a level four. Many people think that children in schools like this are not very able, and that's not the case. It's a case of finding what they can do and making sure you maximise that to give them every opportunity to become equipped for adult life. Again, well done, Jack. Small class sizes have been a big factor in Oakwood's success, but it's the committed staff team, and in particular the LSAs, which have really driven the school forward. Originally, when we started, we were designated to have seven learning support assistants, and it became very evident early on that they were a vital part of the success of the school. Rhinos are Herbie Fours. What does that mean, Chase? It means that they don't eat meat. Yeah, they only eat uh, grass and plants and all that. Grass and leaves. Very... Well done. Kind of fight when they are. Liana Stein takes a Year 7 literacy lesson about rhinos, with support from Linda Jolly and Rita O'Reilly. Endangered means that the animal is very close to becoming extinct. Does anybody know what extinct means? Go on. Um, so, like, it's nearly dying. Like, it's dying. What's dying? Um, the animal. That particular yeah. animal, that breed. Having more LSAs in the classroom means that you can focus on different ability groups. Now, who can tell me why we've got rhinos there, yet down here we've got a little apostrophe in it? What's the difference? Does anyone know? Because it's, uh, like, it's a lot of rhinos, like rhinos. So it's a plural. Plural. Good boy. Particularly with younger children, we felt that Often two learning support assistants in the classroom meant that children could keep focused on their learning. So initially we had learning support assistants attached to classes and they followed the children from lesson to lesson to lesson. But as demands on the curriculum changed, we put our learning support assistants in subject-based classes and that's proved to be the most successful uh, because it's also given the learning support assistants more knowledge within a certain subject area so that they can promote and support the students learning in that area. One of the ways they can do this is one-on-one -on -one pupil assessment. What are they doing in that picture? Laying. Laying. Laying in what? Mud. So do they look distressed or upset? Have a look, what do you think? They look upset. Or do they just look happy laying in the mud? Yeah. But this is a little speech and language assessment. We're just getting the boys to put the pictures in order. We've discussed all the parts of the um, story and about the rhino that we wanted them to know. We're just going to see if what their understanding of it is. And I'm looking at, do they use what they're describing like, what's the relevant information they give me, if they picked anything out of the text that they've heard, and do they use the appropriate language. Right, just talk me through why you've put them in that order. Um, they lying in mud bar. And that one don't look really nice. But it looks like he's going to kill it or something, yeah. doesn't it? TAs are very good with doing one-to-one -one assessments. They are also very good with helping and supporting to level the children because they pick up on things that I might miss. Do you think he achieved his level three? Not in that assessment, no. I also don't think he did. Right, remind me to set a target for him in literacy with Rita so she can work on that a bit more. I just appreciate having them around all the time. What we've talked about in class with um, 
the adding and subtracting. And we have the, the columns. Yeah, the lowest column being units, then... Tens, hundreds. Yeah, and then, right. So what are these then? They're all... Units. Right, so can you just order them? Pupils identified in class as having particular difficulties with a subject attend one-to-one -one sessions with a specialist right. LSA. So, so then, could you do the same with those? Here, Sharon Booth is looking at place value. She has to be sure that basic concepts such as these are clear in the pupil's mind before they can progress. 4,673, right? So that's the number we're making. So if you were making 73, what cards would you need? 73? Yeah. Uh, 73. Use that one. Right, you can pick them up. We make them. We put the um, triangle corners together. So we've got 73. So now we need, we want it to be 673. 4,600. Excellent. What other card do you need? Right, excellent. So you've made the number 4,673. Although the school's focus is academic, many pupils also benefit from the alternative curriculum. We've looked at other opportunities for learning that students could have. It became obvious that not all of our children are GCSE candidates, and so it was a case of finding opportunities for them to develop skills that they could take into the, into the workforce or perhaps generate an interest that might promote them going on to college. One such activity is the Archway Project, which takes place at a local youth centre. LSA's Nikki Andrews and Alison Cruz take a small group of Year 10 and 11s off-site to take part in a motorbike maintenance project. Well, the bike's been taken out on a ride and it's gotten a bit messy, so I've got to clean it up a bit, get all the mud off it, so when it goes on the next ride, no mud can burn the engine or anything, really. Basically, anything that can go wrong with a motorbike, then we fix it. Yeah, I love it. I think it's a great asset for them to have the opportunity to come and do some maintenance on motorbikes, to actually learn to ride them safely um, and to learn the good things about bikes rather than tearing around the streets, doing things they shouldn't be doing. What are you doing? Uh, taking the carburetor off, seeing if it's dirty. Okay. If it's dirty, then clean it, do? dry it out. And what do we need to put in under those? Uh, washers. All done. Excellent. I think it's important in our school because a lot of the children can't access all the curriculum. Yeah, they're quite nice. Yeah. And I think hands-on subjects are so helpful for them in later life. It's not all hands-on, though. Project manager William Page takes them through the theoretical elements of the course. We're going to do a little recap session today. Four-stroke cycle, you'll be pleased to know. we we'll see what you can remember from last time. So, squeeze whatever that bang. one is and blow. Yeah. Yep. That was the bang one, isn't it? Suck, <laughs> squeeze, bang, blow. Yeah. You've got it in well. well see, done. I knew you'd remember that. <laughs> Some young people go on to do mechanical base work. More often than not, though, it's a case of just sitting down and seeing a course through to the end. Um, the fact that people have attained that qualification often means more than what the qualification's in. Four men were in a blue car travelling at 30 mile an hour oh, down... This is long, I don't like this! Over 50% of the pupils had speech, language and communication difficulties. So Oakwood's two Hilters, Maria Sneed and Linda Jolly, have developed the social language programme with input from the speech and language service. The overall aim of the social language programme is to show children appropriate ways to behave. As well as addressing their speech and language and getting them to use clear communication, it's also the social skills, a bit like the personal space, the body language, making eye contact. They're all things they don't really necessarily know how to do. The theme for today is listening. Me and Percy are going clubbing. All right, mate. Oh, by the way, Fred, don't forget. Oh, this music's banging. Oh, listen, this tune, man. You got, oh, you've got yeah. a ring, John. Right? Don't forget, you've got a ring, John. You listen. Yeah, yeah, whatever. No, oh, listen to the music. We've got to 
we make it fun through role play so they can engage in it. So that's the ultimate aim, really, is to get them to communicate rather than crash and bang. Swap round. In this activity, one pupil tries to guess what the other has on his card. Maria tries to distract them both by asking some general knowledge questions. What is a baby cat called? Well done. Who is the Prime Minister? Where is the Eiffel Tower? Did you get any of that? Matt, did you hear anything what he was saying? Got any idea what it is? Say some of the things you heard him say. It's black and white, and that's about it. That's about it. Well done. It's very difficult, isn't it? Now, you're very close to each other, and yet you're still not hearing because I'm talking. A lot of our students haven't got good focusing skills and they are very easily distracted. They may have ADHD, which obviously affects their behaviour. It's just to let them know and see what they do in class and, and to create self-awareness that they are actually distracting others from learning. Have a look. The school recognises how valuable the LSAs are and is fully supportive of their professional development. My background is not really an educational one. When I came here, I actually sat my GCSEs with the year 10s and 11s and achieved Bs, two in English and one in maths, which I'm quite proud of. From that, I went on to do a degree. Two of our learning support assistants have um, trained as and, and are now appointed as Hilters, and they're able to conduct lessons because the advantage is that the students know the learning support assistants, they understand the expectation because they promote the ethos of the school. It's not just the senior management and teachers that so highly value the LSAs. The pupils appreciate having somebody else they can talk to. If you get stuck on work, the LSAs are always there and they're on the corner of the room to help you and sitting next to someone and you can just call them and they help you. Different from any other school I've been to because much smaller environment and have more chance to get on my work and there's more LSAs in, in classrooms and more one-to-one -one help. It's a lot better because my dad ain't getting phone calls every day saying I'm, I've been bad and they give you more chances, give you more time to calm down in lessons if you're upset or annoyed and uh, then you go back and you're calm and you can get on with the lesson. When I started the school I couldn't read I couldn't write, I could barely count from 1 to 10. And now my reading age is 15 plus. Um, planned a C or a D in maths, and so I've improved a lot since I've started this school. The progress that the young people make in this school has been judged to be outstanding, and that's really down to the input that everybody teaches and learning support assistants have. I think that they are the glue that keeps this school together. We are unable to exist without them. I think the power and the strength of this school lies in the teamwork of the LSA supporting the children as well as the teaching staff. They're wonderful. Uh -huh.